for another kitty cat bedtime story. This one is really cool. It's about a cat named Trim and a Captain Flinders. Now before you share this with your kit, your favorite kit, let me tell you this. Sheer numbers show cats to be the most popular pets in the United States, far outnumbering canines. Sadly though, very few of us know anything about the many distinguished roles they have played throughout history. So today I'm going to tell you about Trim, and now you can share this with your favorite kit. Trim began his life aboard a ship in 1799, and the ship was named the Reliance. That was a, a ship that was sailing east across the Indian Ocean to Botany Bay, and the weather was heavy with howling winds that tossed the good ship Reliance to and fro. And down below deck, a litter of little meowing kittens were, were born. Cats were often kept on ships because nearly all were infested with mice and rats, gnawing on valuable cargoes as well as the food stores. The mother cat had likely been born at sea just as her fuzzy, um, blind, flat-eared kittens were. This particular birth <clears throat> was unusual because uh, it chronicled which is, it was chronicled, which is why we know about it over 200 years later. One of those kittens was a sweet little tomcat whose name had been uh, uh, given by uh, Captain Matthew Flinders as Trim, and he became the captain's personal companion. Captain Flinders was a British explorer, and together with his friend Trim, had many harrowing adventures. They were inseparable friends. Captain Flinders, with Trim at his side, was the first man ever to map much of the coast of Australia. Finally, in 1800, Trim and his human, Captain Flinders, made their way back to England. Trim met Mrs. Flinders uh, the, there, and uh, she presumably became one of the, um, or one of his favorite humans also. Between the years of 1802 and 1815, England found itself at war with France. A little thing like a war didn't stop Flinders and Trim, as in 1802 they sailed back to the Antipodes where the, they encountered a French ship at uh, the appropriately named Encounter Bay on Australia's south coast. In 1803, Trim and his pet human were aboard the Porpoise, and they found themselves ship shipwrecked for many months before they were rescued. The ship named Cumberland, which provided their rescue, was no more seaworthy than was the porpoise, and were forced to put put in um, on the uh, on the French, the enemy island of uh, Maru Marutus, where they sought help. The landing on the island was not destined to be a good time. Flinders and Trim were held as spies for seven years before Captain Flinders and Trim were finally released. The captain was to return to England to retire, but the fates were not so kind to poor old Trim as he quite mysteriously vanished and was supposed um, to be lost to some wild animals. We know all of this as Captain Flinders kept a journal during the time he and Trim were held in the detention camp on the French island, and that journal is now housed in the Maritime Museum located in Greenwich, England, or Greenwich, England. The journal talks at length about his affection for Trim. It was Captain Flinders' desire that at some point there would be a memorial to Trim for the little cat's merriment, intelligence, and affection. And, with, uh, and his wish was realized some 200 years later. In 1996, the State Library of New South Wales, Sydney, made the captain's wish a reality. Since 1925, a statue of the captain stood outside the library, <clears throat> and in 1996, the captain's statue was joined by a handsome, life-size statue of Trim that was cast in bronze by sculptor John Cornwell. Now Trim is housed, uh, now Trim is housed nose up in a sunny windowsill at the library together with his dear friend. The money raised for Trim's uh, statue was by donations, many of which were gifts in the name of the donor's uh, own feline companions. The statue of Trim was unveiled in March 28, 1996 by their Rear Admiral David Campbell in the company of 400 um, attendees. And so ends the story of Captain Flinders and his dear companion Trim. I hope you enjoyed this story. Tell you what, tonight before your cat turns in, be sure if you didn't read it to him now, or let him listen to it now, let him listen to it before bed. It makes a great bedtime story for cats and should give them 
adventurous dreams. Thanks for stopping by, and have a wonderful evening. And please be sure to give a thumbs up and leave your comments. God bless you all and your little kitty cat companions and the dog companions that are out there too. Good night.